Across Africa, various actions are being undertaken to conserve vultures. However, most of them are small in scale. For example, awareness and advocacy to combat poisoning and regulate use of agrochemicals is being conducted in various countries, including Kenya, Uganda, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Burkina Faso, and South Africa. General awareness campaigns are being done by BirdLife partner NGOs in at least nine countries, especially through celebration of the annual International Vulture Awareness Day. Monitoring of vulture populations are done through road counts, carcass-based counts, and annual site counts in countries like Kenya, Uganda, and South Africa. But it is not possible to do these every year due to resource limitations. Research on various aspects of vulture ecology is being conducted through separate small-scale projects in at least 13 bird life network countries. A preliminary survey has been done to assess the extent to which vulture parts are sold for use in traditional medicine in West Africa. In Zimbabwe, a national vulture conservation action plan is being compiled following a national workshop held in March 2015. Vultures also benefit from an ongoing project that is mainstreaming conservation of migratory soaring birds into productive sectors in the Rift Valley and the Red Sea Flyway, covering Egypt, Ethiopia and Sudan. Most of these actions are done in collaborations with government agencies, universities and other NGOs. However, they need to be significantly scaled up and better coordinated for them to have greater impact for securing vultures. Our vultures take care of the society. The Nigerian Conservation yeah. Foundation on its part is stepping up advocacy towards the plight of the birds. Recently in Lagos, it held its annual SL Aju Memorial Lecture, an initiative to immortalize its founder and first president, Shafi Lawal Aju. The aim of the lecture is to instigate a broad public discourse of environmental issues and policies. This year, the organizers focused on the last Nigerian vulture, the consequence for human health and the economy. They serve as the sanitary officers. They serve as the cleaners of the environment. Uh, carcasses, um, dead birds and corpses and all those things that are on the road, without them, if they are left like that, then it endangers mankind. And uh, we cannot afford to have that. And that's why we are seeing the, the, the trend, the declining trend of the vulture population and it's becoming, it's, it has become a concern, not just in Nigeria, but in Africa. Because there's no part of the vulture, no body part of the vulture that is useless for the people that actually need them, for the people that actually kill them. None, even the head, every, every part of the body of the, of the vulture is very, very expensive. They sell it. And that's why it's so attractive to them to kill them. But um, we cannot afford, Manka cannot afford to, to just be a spectator, to, I mean, to be spectators. So that's why we have taken it as one of our major programs in NCF, uh, together with our international partners, to, to actually let people know the importance. That's number one, because you need to let people know the importance. When you talk about it, just like you said, you think about death. Yeah, but you should also think about life. <laughs> Vulture is life, because without them, man can, cannot survive. The Nigerian Conservation Foundation has developed a national vulture advocacy plan, and its officials are hoping the Federal Ministry of Environment will partner with them to launch and drive all plans into action. Particularly in this case, we work with BirdLife International, and BirdLife International, in conjunction with ourselves and the federal government, are running programs to see how we can encourage people not to poison vultures. Uh, a lot of the vultures are dying because uh, poachers are poisoning uh, meat. They leave for uh, animals to eat in order to, to trap them. And uh, also a lot of vultures are being eaten as uh, in place of chicken. A lot of education needs to, to, to happen. People must appreciate the value of vultures. And this will be important to, pre to preserving our vultures. The United Nations Deputy Secretary General and Minister of Environment, who was the guest speaker at the Nigerian Conservation Foundation's annual lecture, believes the loss of Nigerian biodiversity poses threats to the vulture population. In Nigeria, of the seven that we have, five are almost extinct, so we're left with two. Um, and, you know, we need to look at the root causes. So some of that has had to do with the poisoning, uh, the use of them as um, food, 
as traditional medicine, um, but some of it's also about um, demographics, population increases, trees come down, uh, they're perching birds, uh, so when they don't have anywhere to perch, uh, you won't find them there. So, so I, I think it was a good subject to pick up because, as I said, it talks about the small um, issue in the whole um, agenda. Experts have conversed for more efforts to combat degradation of forests, which will in turn protect the wildlife and Nigeria's biodiversity. We try as conservationists um, to, to preach sustainable use. Sustainable use is uh, simply put in my, in, my professor's, uh, in my professor's language, chop today, chop tomorrow. So you cannot just finish everything at once. You need to be able to take today and then you have enough to take tomorrow and also to leave for the future generation. Yeah, that's just uh, sustainable, sustainability. It's uh, using something that would not jeopardize the future generation's um, um, access to those things as well. Yeah, so it, it, it also applies to, to vulture. If we must, if we must, I'm saying if we must use them, we use them sustainably. But sometimes you find uh, in some markets, some vulture markets, you find literally thousands of birds lying down. Most of the wildlife Nigeria can boast of today are either endangered, vulnerable, or facing the threats of extinction. Yet many still hunt them for food or ornament. The Nigerian Minister of Environment has expressed federal government's commitment to saving the country's wildlife from extinction and empowering communities whose livelihoods depend on wildlife resources. The ministry says wildlife exploitation, illicit trade and habitat fragmentation are the key threats to biodiversity as they concern thousands of plants and animal species and can lead to extinction if not properly addressed. Hence, the United Nations General Assembly Resolution designated the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora Secretariat as an instrument for monitoring illegal trade in wildlife species. The Nigerian Ministry of Environment, being the focal point of implementation, has domesticated the Endangered Species Act Convention to conserve wild species that are almost driven into extinction due to over-exploitation. Many believe Nigeria could play a critical role in saving the continent's most precious natural resources, including wildlife, if the government would enact and implement more stringent penalties for wildlife trafficking that would help dissuade potential traffickers from using Nigeria as a transit point. The regulation Nigeria came up with in 2011 is to do, like also reinforcing the implementation of the, uh, the the act. In addition to uh, where there's some progress going on now, we realize that not just on this area, the there is need to make the laws more stringent in the sense of the penalty. Environmental experts have appealed to government at various levels to promote the sustainable management of forests and wildlife resources to conserve biodiversity and enhance social economic growth. Experts say only by adopting such policies would African countries achieve the targets set in the Sustainable Development Goals and address the challenges posed by climate change. Governments must ensure that forest lands are used in a way that conserves biodiversity and releases their full potential to fulfill ecological, economic and social functions without damaging other ecosystems. That's our program for today. Thank you for being a part of it. You can view this episode or any other episode of the program by visiting our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash channelsweb. Click on the playlist menu and then click it file. From me, Ayola Kasim, and the rest of the crew here in Lagos, it's bye for now.